Liverpool 4, Newcastle 2. And I have to say it, Jurgen Klopp's men, Liverpool Football Club, are frightening. 32 attempts on goal. An XG of over 7, the highest on record ever for a Premier League team. Five points clear of defending champions, the treble winners, Manchester City. And a Mo Salah masterclass to boot. This was nothing short of an absolute beatdown. A beatdown of Newcastle who have now, by the way, lost seven of their last eight games in all competitions. It is as simple and it is as straightforward as that. This, uh, this Liverpool team are frightening. This Liverpool team are dangerous. We know they're in the title race already, and they are fast, be fast in my opinion, becoming the favourites to lift this Premier League title. What an absolutely exhilarating display from them today. We're going to go through it and break it all down. Yes, there's some controversy around the penalties. I'll give you my opinions on them, but I want to garnish the show with your takes. I want to understand what you think, what you feel regarding this match as well, the title credentials of this Liverpool team. But I wanted to start off with Mohamed Salah. And I wanted to start with Mohamed Salah because only two weeks ago, and funnily enough, I tweeted about this and I got sick for even bringing it up as a conversation. But we had obviously Lee Gunnar, a massive friend of the show. There's other Liverpool fans out there that were saying Salah is finished. You should sell him. He doesn't offer enough anymore. I thought at the time that was a crazy take. I thought at the time it was reactionary and very, very premature from Liverpool fans to think this. I kind of get it from Lee Gunner. Lee doesn't rate. Lee doesn't rate him, so I understand. But Mohamed Salah, I've said it again. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Mohamed Salah is the greatest Premier League player in Liverpool's history. That, for me, is not an opinion anymore. It is a cast iron fact. The consistency that he delivers, the amount of goals, the amount of assists, the amount of performances like today. Today was just today for me. It was today was in a catalogue of brilliant performances from this man. It really is, and what we saw from him, his creativity, some of his passing, some of his dribbling. Of course, there was the goals that he scored as well. One was yes, one was a penalty, one was a, a tap in, but it was from a well worked piece of football. And I'm just I hate saying this as a Man United fan because he's Liverpool. I'm in awe of this guy. He's absolutely phenomenal. I think he's for as great as he is, he's one of the most disrespected top class football players I've ever seen in my life. I don't understand. I think what it comes down to is that he was grouped with a with a, with a handful of players maybe five, six years ago. And most of those other guys have faded. They've never reached the heights they should have done. And Mo Salah is maybe he isn't the most aesthetically pleasing of them all. But because he is the one who's delivered, because he is the one that's actually lived up to the hype, you all, people just can't accept they were wrong. They have to find ways to hate on individuals. That's a typically how human beings operate. So he does deserve a lot more respect than he gets, especially when it comes from rival fans. This is a, this is somebody who is going into the goat conversation of Premier League footballers when he retires. That is how good he is, and I thought he was absolutely sensational today. But Liverpool as a whole, Liverpool as a, 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 as a whole, are just we're just out of this world today. And I understand that it, it, it did at some point, it looked at the game, Newcastle might catch it. They did score on the break. They just, Newcastle scored twice, by the way, against the run of play. And they could have won this match. Darwin Nunes just could not finish his dinner. The irony of Gakpo's goal, right? When Darwin had hit some brilliant shots. But Liverpool didn't stop. They were absolutely cutting, cutting Newcastle to ribbons. And sometimes you have those games where you think they're going to root, root, root these missed chances in a minute and they're going to be caught, become a cropper, they're going to lose. It didn't feel like that way, that, that way for me today. I, it always looked like Liverpool were going to do something crazy. I always, it always felt like they were going to score three, four, five goals. And if they'd have scored some of their early chances, then missed a bunch and scored another one at the end, nobody would be saying they're lucky or how did, they, how did this happen? This was one of the best Liverpool performances I've seen in years. And for me, it's a marker that they are not just in this title race, but they, they are almost, for me now, in my own personal opinion, almost neck and neck with Man City to be favourites with this five-point lead they have. Yes, there's a game in hand, but game in hands need to be won at the end of the day. 
But Liverpool look great. They look frightening, frighteningly good today. And I will say this about Darwin Nunes. I'm sure the panel will bring this up. I get the missed opportunities and not finishing his dinner is frustrating. But I think Liverpool should stick with this guy. I think there is a, such a quality player within him. And although they scored the majority of the goals after he came off, there was an element of the dynamism that wasn't quite there. They just had more killers on the pitch. They've got to find a way of unleashing that killer instinct, that finishing touch. And I believe that can come. He's still very, very young. But overall, as I say, an absolutely dominant, frightening performance from Liverpool. Now, of course, there's controversy around the penalty. The first one, I think, is a penalty. Yes, he takes a step afterwards. He's off balance. But there was definite contact. Penalty. That's it. The second one, I'm going to be honest with you. There is contact. There's such a delay in the player going down. I think he tries to stay on his feet because he thinks I'm going to score. Then he can't. And he falls and throws himself to the ground. By the letter of the law, there's contact. So you can call it as a foul. I do think that was a little bit harsh on Newcastle in terms of um, the way Jota went down. But it becomes a really interesting debate because he was fouled. He was clipped by the goalkeeper. Therefore, he has been knocked off balance. If he isn't clipped by the goalkeeper, maybe he gets to the ball and taps it in. So there is an argument in both directions. However, I think if Liverpool conceded that same penalty to, and it went 3-3 and they drew the game, I think Liverpool fans would be fuming. So it's one of those where if you get it, you go, well, he, he got clipped. It made him off balance. If you concede it, you think it's absolutely harsh. I thought overall today, the referee and VAR were absolutely brilliant. A, a couple of really close offsides Three, actually, but Gakpo's goal. All of the decisions by the on-field officials were correct. I thought the temperament of the game was very well managed. And I've really criticized referees as of late, but I didn't think today they necessarily got too much wrong. I just would have maybe not given that penalty at the end. But I could be being a little bit harsh there. I'd love to get your view and opinions on that. Uh, not as a cheat. End of. Could have. Just score it. I don't know what that means there, my friend. Uh, Terry, it was an open goal. Why will he dive? I didn't. I, I mean, you have to watch. I mean, listen, let's not, let's not get twisted, Liverpool fans. He definitely threw himself to the ground, okay? We've all played football. We all know what that's like. But yeah, he was clipped. He was fouled. And I understand it. All I would say, yeah, I, I get it. There is a part of me, though, that just, and maybe it's just the way I view sport in general. You know, like in tennis, when a player hits a ball and it hit, clips a net and it falls down the other side and they get the point but they kind of apologize for it. That's how that sort of felt to me. Yes, it was a foul, but the way he went down, it's just a little bit magoo. But I wouldn't necessarily say, I don't think Newcastle will be robbed by any stretch of the imagination um, at all. You know, when, you, when your best player of the day is Debravka, that tells you everything you need to know about the game. Uh, it's as simple as that. There's some super chats here. First one says, uh, we need an attacker because without Salah, these other guys are not clinical enough. Uh, we got the goals today because Salah basically forced us to score. This is my prediction. The last time Salah and the last time Mane went as well, went away to AFCOM, they both got to the final as well. It was predicted that Liverpool would absolutely die a death. And it was actually really good few weeks. Won all their games, scored goals. I think some of these players will step up. Sometimes it's easier. To, look what's happened at Spurs this year. No pain, what's going to happen to them? Son scoring, Richarlison's now scoring, Kuliseski's got back to scoring. The team looks better without Kane, not because Kane was a problem, but because sometimes it can be galvanizing. So I think rivals going, ha ha, your team's going to fall apart because Salah's leave, leaving. All you're doing is galvanizing that team. This is one of those moments where you should keep your mouth shut as a rival, say nothing about it, and maybe just maybe you'll get your wish come true. Loose lips sink ships. It's as simple as that. Um, so I think Liverpool will be okay without him. Plus, there's two weeks without Premier League games now as well. Uh, if that Jota dive is a penalty, every game uh, is a robbery. That is what IFL has got to say. Listen, it, it, it's a fair opinion to have IFL, but I will remember what you're saying. And if your team, I think you're a Man City fan, if you get a penalty that way and you're not calling it a dive and calling your own players out, it becomes hard to take you seriously. 